welcome everybody to our hangout webinar. Uh, today's discussion would be on what makes what makes us unique, and um, what do you enjoy about being human? About who you are. So, do you mind if I start off? Go ahead. Hmm. <clears throat> I'm just going off the top of my head. What I love about being human is that I thought it was a very negative experience growing up and something that I never liked, something that I never wanted. And once I just stopped struggling with it, I realized it was it's the greatest experience. And I love just being able to turn that negative into positive. And that's a huge theme in humanity. Um, how were you able to do that? I was given the negative experiences like all of us were, and I chose to take a positive definition out of it. Yeah, but, but what, what in you decided, okay, let me turn this to a positive experience? Ah, that's a very good question. I'm not sure. I think I'd just like to attribute to the level of awareness I was at at the moment. But yeah, my that's a unique thing about humanity is its ability. It may not be unique in all of the universe, but its ability to transmute the negative into the positive. Also, the degree of negativity which most of us face. But we have to embrace the the negative aspects, the darkness, because it's part of our legacy as humans. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Would like to go next? And your answer in English is? <laughs> yes. Well, like, I, I learned that uh, for fear is something like I know now. Before I was afraid, but I realized that's something I brought in to expand on the experience I was having and as soon as I realized I don't have to be afraid of the fear fear kind of became something enjoyable experience for me instead of a frightening experience you bring up a very good point fear that's another human uniquely human aspect that we are exploring as a collective in the sense that it plays a big part in our transition. Huge. Yeah. So, so what do you enjoy about being human, Gabriel? Being on the hangouts. <laughs> 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 Having fun. Like what? What do you Could consider we, fun? Yeah, when I was in Iceland and I jumped on on the rock right into ice cold water. I felt really alive at that time. Like I was truly living. I, I'm glad you enjoy that because I would never enjoy that. <laughs> uh, gosh. Okay, Wendy? I'm not finished yet, Sabrina. Oh, you're not. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. And, and when you like expand with yourself and you feel like you succeed in something, something you never thought you were possible that you could succeed in, and you find yourself you actually are able to do it, and then you like stand on top of the mountain. Yes, yes, I made it feeling great. What do you think has helped you succeed? What 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 of your character has helped you succeed? That's 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 a too complicated question, Sabrina. <laughs> no it's not. I have another question. Anybody else have felt that way? Yeah, I'm sure many have. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And when you get get surprised, the world when it surprises you, you know that when you let it go and allow the world to surprise you in a new way that you didn't never really thought that was possible. Yes, viewing the world with new eyes. Are you crying, Sabrina? Yes, I'm crying. <laughs> I'm so touched. My son <laughs> is so wise. <laughs> Can you share it? Oh, I'm I'm just kidding with Gabriel. Gabriel was my child in another life, so Oh I see. I still treat him as my child. <laughs> That's why Well you got to let me grow up, Sabrina. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Um Wendy. Um yeah, and to kind of piggyback off the negative thing too and and realizing that I came through a negative co-creation for myself and um you know Understanding now that I created it at the time and what I what we would then be, view as negative, yet the internal, I think it was like the internal understanding of that we are here, I was here for a larger purpose and that I really came here to make a difference and I think that internal knowing was the driving force through that negative um, you know, childhood that now, of course, I know I created for myself to become the person that I am now, and I get that now, but at the time, I think part of the joy of being a human is understanding that you have that internal drive to always know that you can change something, that you're here for something bigger, and that what you're, you matter. And I think that's really the biggest thing every human, I think, wants to experience is the feeling of that communication and mattering um, to not only another human and in contact with another human, but mattering to the whole equation of all that is and your view of all that is, what, however you see that, whether you see it as source energy or God or, or what have you. So sure. I, I what, think what, that's part of it, of what, being human. Mm -hmm. Yes, Gabe. How would you, how do you feel your future will be with your expansion of that? I just got to <laughs> don't want to ask you that. What do you mean? I'm not sure I understand your question. If if you continue with doing that things, how do you feel like your future life is going to feel like? You know, it's funny because it <laughs> the more ch the more choices and the, the more you open your mind to new choices, the more those choices then become new choices that you could have never begun to imagine, if you understand where I'm going with that. Yes, that's beautiful. So it's hard to answer that question only because it's difficult to imagine what we conceive as unimaginable, although now we know we can't imagine something we're not the frequency of. So. Therefore, when you do imagine something, there's a lot of comfort as a human now in this ascension process, understanding that that means something. And I think part of the best part about being a human, for me, is the ability to be able to communicate to other humans and my universe and the collective universes, if you will, um, all that is, you know, through communication, through creativity, to be able to know that you're actually, every time we create something, we've made something that never existed before, whether it's, and it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's music, a photograph, writing, um, you know, a song lyric, uh, a note that was never played in quite that sequence before, that sort of thing. So I think that, for me, is the best part about being human, is to be able to, we talk about, manifestation and energy being matter and I guess that's what it's all about is that 
ability to understand that you really are creating something that didn't exist for you before and once it's there it's there forever okay and since this is going to be there forever what would you tell a human which is similar to the question that I was asking before um, a human who wants to help transform its life by changing how he views the outside world. The only way I was able to change the way I viewed the outside world was, and I know it sounds so cliche now, but the only way was to turn within. And because it was far too, it became far too painful to no longer be what I came here to be. And so I had to look within to find out where that pain was coming from and why I was why would I why am I creating ex an experience that I'm not preferring. Mm -hmm. And to look and I think synchronicity once we are aware of our ascension process the synchronicities around us as we all know once you're aware of them, but they accelerate, and I think that's part of the fun of being human, <laughs> is is being able to see the synchronicities and realizing these are all the messages we're leaving for ourselves to ourselves. Okay, thank you. Beautiful, uh, Brian. Yeah, I'm just getting this overwhelming love from Caitlin right now. It feels so wonderful. <laughs> the red lipstick and the kiss earlier. I mean, you can't beat that. That's worth coming to the planet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's what you enjoy about the planet, women? <laughs> I love women's energy. Yes, I do. It feels so good inside. Just to see a, the the beauty of, of women in general, I, I love it. But yes, it, it's a, just an example for Caitlin. It, she gives off this beautiful aura, and that's it, it's very very attractive, very cool. Thanks, <laughs> Sabrina. Let's see you, so we can see your brilliance. <laughs> Sabrina's beauty. Now, I, going back to being a human, what it means to be a human, um, what it feels, it feels wonderful first. Um, you know, the, 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 the fear is always the not knowing, but yet it's, it's allowing yourself to accept, to be vulnerable. And there's so much more that comes to you when you just allow. But, but just being human, being here, and realizing from the other races that it's not always like that out there. So this is very unique. And I, I'm honored to be on the planet now um, because I wouldn't I wouldn't change it for the world. You know? I mean just I mean the the sensation, the five the senses, the limited senses that we view from ourselves. You know, the taste, the touch, the hearing, the smelling, the the feeling, it's I love the touch, I would miss it if I couldn't be able to feel, touch, to give a hug to another. It's that embracing, you know, that Kundalini energy. It would, it, it's just, there's nothing like it. it. It feels so good. But if we, as our bodies, as we're ascending into 4D, as we can take that lifetime after lifetime, you know, so much more of our senses, but still feel that human side of us, that's going to be really cool. I think it's funny how, as humans, we share food, we share the need for food, need for water, need for love, and everything like that, even the need to be angry sometimes and be depressed and let those perspectives in. Oh, man, it just got wiped for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My brain uh, just goes whoop sometimes. Yes. Yeah, so what was your question again, Sabrina, exactly? You had a couple, two-part, didn't it? Uh, yeah, and... What makes humanity different? Cho choices. What we choose. How we choose it. 
why we choose it. Yeah, when you when you said about uh, vulnerability. Yes. I I think though. Um, come into the realization that if you get in the ring, you're gonna get punched down. Um, right, because there's always a probability of that happening. Right. Right, but but also learning to get up and then move on. Yeah. Yes. yes. And then being being willing to get back on. It, it was so much easier being vulnerable when we were children. But as we got older, we felt like we were more restricted. We felt like more there was yeah. more um, rules and regulations. It's ego. As we get older. Yeah. Ego. It's ego. We become ego a prey. Right. Ego tries Fear. to protect you because you're in a yeah. situation where it feels threatened. Right. And it tries to protect you so it does the best job it can. Yeah. So, so we feel like something's coming at us. Or at, but when we're kids, the mindset at the time is we don't care what's out there. We're going to explore. We don't care about rules and regulations. We just we're so we feel more freer as children. Do you remember when you were kids and someone said, "Do you want to go out and play?" And that was the end right there. You could just <laughs> see outside, and then you're like, "It's done. Today's done. We're going out to play." And now, if we do that, do you guys want to go outside and play? People are like, "What are you? Are you mentally challenged?" Right, right. Uh, take for instance an example. A model. Uh, uh, after a rainstorm, and there's this big, big mud puddle. You see kids would just run and jump in the mud puddle and getting dirty and go, you know, mud flying everywhere. But if we watch, you know, we don't mind as children, even as adults, watching children do that. But the minute an adult does that, it's weird. It's, it's strange. Scrunched up faces, looking in confusion. Why? Because the adults, other than observing that, they see it as. You know, who does she think he is? Why are they doing that? They start questioning. You're not allowed them. to do that. You can't do that. How you have, can you have, have fun? You have it to looks be like an adult. Fun, but they won't allow themselves to have that fun in the moment. They and that's allow, what's great. They have to get beyond the mindset to say, why couldn't I do that? Why can't I? And that's what's great about the time we're in now is more and more, and as time goes on, more and more people are finding it okay to connect with that inner child. It's the not taboo anymore. Playfulness to bring it back, yeah. Well, in the playing outside, like you said, Brian, the playing outside, even my own kids tell me that they feel like they're the last generation to actually go play outside. Right. You know, where you just played outside all day. I mean, that's what you did, you know? But here's the thing. We can still do it, but it's getting over the fear of what others think. Oh, I want to go jump in that mud puddle. Then why not? Part of our job here, too, is to to remind people that the, it, the essentialness of realigning with nature in general and the sunshine and, and the earth and the trees and the plants and so forth. I feel now more than ever people are going back to nature. You can see like billionaires these days and people who have a lot of money, they all want houses out in nature. Nobody wants a house in the middle of a city unless they're attached to it or they have work there. Their job, right. You are right. Yep. Yeah, I, but... You know what, uh, Brian, usually that child comes out whenever it snows and people go outside and play. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can see the yeah, child. Funny. I that. like how snow is acceptable, but rain's not. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's so not yeah. Well, snow you can hold in your hands and create things out of, and it's a little harder to do that with rain. Yeah. That's true. To me, rain is just too cold. <laughs> I love rain. <laughs> but when I used rains, to do it when I was rain. when I was a child. You know, it, we always went outside in the rain. Yeah, when it rains, it releases it negative ions, which are also in waterfalls, mm -hmm. and that releases serotonin in your brain. Those negative ions do, and they just uplift your mood and make you feel amazing. Yeah. Okay. Yes, and there's the freshness about that too. You're outside, and the, and the the smell after a rainstorm, after a thunderstorm. Yeah. You smell the fresh air, you know. It feels so good. Yeah. It's yeah. on many levels. Gordon. Other, yeah, from there. I'm good. I'll, I'll, I'll let go, Gordon. Gordon? I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you hear the questions you wanted me to... Uh, 
Uh, yes. So, go back to where it says about this. The initial question is what makes humanity different, and what do you enjoy about being human? Yeah, what, what well, I see, I mean, I see an underlying theme as, you know, for, for humans, as we're speaking to, um, the beauty of human beings, the beauty of this experience, okay, so now, and this incarnation for me is, you know, we have an incredible range of emotions, you know, as we're all speaking to, and, you know, that, that incredible range of emotions has an incredible depth of very highs and very lows, and... Truly, you know, that allows for such a richness. Um, to me, to me, to kind of give a good visual analogy would be like some people have a two or three course meal, or they only have two or three items on a menu. Or you, it was not, not, that's not the best way to start it. You walk into a room, and to your left, you see, you know, one table with two or three options. You have, you know, some fruits and vegetables, and that's about it. And to your right, you have a table with an incredible plethora, a cornucopia of food. You have all different types of incredible sorted fruits, all sort of different plants and vegetables, all these incredible um, curated and, and you know, amazing certain meats that have been, you know, loved and organically done and all these things, you know, but this incredible plethora of all the beauty of, of this selection. And to me, that's a similar analogy to kind of emotional complexity and beauty of being an emotional being. You know, with, with over 22 types of you know archetypes, as Carl Jung spoke to, uh, that we can that we can have. You know, the, the the simple fact that there's sarcasm on this planet is is this very unique human thing that we've created. That ETs come in and they love, and they don't really, they, they don't they don't even have that within their consciousness. Sometimes they're like, well, they, we only speak literally. You know, the Spock kind of understanding of like literally this. We're like, no, it's sarcasm, but. Oh, that's all another thing. Well, that, we, you know, we think about that. We literally are creating these intangibles. You know, these these personality traits. Where we're creating a new entire consciousness. You know, and that's an honor. You know, being able to be in a position where we are able to be way showers and be able to truly have this entirely rich set of emotions to utilize at our disposal to say, you know, I experience the darkest nights of the hour to appreciate the, the, the dawn. You know, I experienced incredible highs to see, you know, truly, as Brian spoke to, this unconditional love, but in a very, um, you know, dense way. It's, it's no better or less. You know, every dimension is, no dimension is better, even if it's a higher dimensional, whether it's the, the 16th dimension. You know, every dimension has a quality. It's just a perspective. It's just an experience. And, yeah. I have a question because, oh man, you have some very unique thought patterns. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. But what, about one of the things you said um, about the emotional range of people, do you think that awareness, being more aware of your surroundings and being more conscious increases your emotional range or do you think they're correlated or no? Yeah, I mean, if you look at it from a biological level, um, what science calls uh, junk DNA is, is to me potential DNA and human beings from my perspective are sorry one second guys I would, I would actually say that, that it's more biological um, that, that you're, the emotional range the emotional range Yes. I feel like awareness and consciousness and the level of how conscious you are affects how deeply you feel emotions. I would agree. Um, see, th the thing is, I think that brings awareness to the emotions and what you're feeling. Oh, that's a good way to put it. Um, I don't think it increases it. I think it just brings the awareness out of, of it. Right, that's what I mean. Um, um, but, but I think, you know, some people have this range of emotions, some people have this range of emotions. So, um, so we don't all, I think, have the same. Oh, you're saying it's emotions. genetic? Yes. Well, I, think I, it's, I, think, I think it's more genetic. I think it's um, both. Genetic and, and can, we're able to influence it. 
and I can tell you why because I have seen like the difference between myself and my son um, and his range of emotion is right here and he's very aware of his emotion how old very, is he? very um, he's 18 now oh okay um, he's very aware of his emotions he, he knows, he studies them he says, oh, how interesting. I'm feeling this. You know, so he's very aware of them. But he always stays in this range. He never goes over Or here. maybe he's just or very here. good at hiding the other emotions. No. Some people are masters at hiding their emotions from others. No, he's not. <laughs> because I'm you very know, good I'm at good reading. At yeah, yeah. I'm very good at reading them. So... Um, especially because I have a pretty big range, I can see pretty much, um, I can see a great deal. But he's, he's able to stay in this state right here, you know, regardless of what goes on or what happens. So, and I think part of it is that he's pretty much, most of his energy is fourth dimensional. Do you mean that he's emotionally stable? Yeah. He doesn't have a great flux, yeah. and and like how some people can go from you know what they call bipolar or whatever. Yeah, that's it's interesting to see how different people have different levels of emotional stability. I'm very affected by things, and I show it. I try to hide it, but I usually wear my heart on the sleeve to use a uh, yeah colloquialism or whatever. Yes, I mean I I and the thing is even as a child. I noticed it, but I, I wasn't able to pinpoint it, and that's why I'm saying I, I can see it because I have basically studied it on him um, and learned from him, not just study, but learned from him that um, regardless of what goes on, he's pretty much able to keep it, you know, within this range and say. Mm -hmm. How interesting. Um, and he's even called me at times and said, I have an interesting emotion right now. Never felt it before. <laughs> hmm. That's cool. <laughs> Wonderful insight. So, yeah. So it's... <clears throat> yeah, so come to that conclusion. Uh, could be wrong, obviously. But um, that's where I'm coming from. Go ahead, Gordon. I'm just observing. I um. Is there a question, or are you just asking? Me? I was just going to okay, ask. Okay, what do you what do you enjoy about being human? <laughs> um, I mean, <laughs> there's a lot. I mean, truly, um, I think it's, hmm. can you pinpoint a little closer to me so I don't make it such a broad answer? Okay. Um, you can talk in terms of emotions, you know, certain things that you feel that make you feel you know, be proud to be human. Or your favorite type Or of you behavior. can talk about uh, things that you do that you enjoy doing that that you're happy to be on this planet. That say, I would have missed this for the world, like Brian said, women. <laughs> okay. So I think I think what you're both kind of saying is, is you know, what, what makes this experience unique that I appreciate? Yeah, what makes it unique and what do you enjoy? Well, I kind of immediately, I guess, a way to pinpoint that for me uh, intuitively goes to, you know, first off, what makes this experience unique in itself? Um, and as we start to have these interactions and discussions with entities that are you know, in different multidimensional states and different realities and perspectives, you know, 
the uniqueness to Earth is especially, you know, as you know, and, and right now is an especially unique period for Earth and humans because we're at this transitioning stage. Um, and we're seeing this bridging between the different dimensional planes to say, whoa, I'm, I'm seeing an old paradigm shifting to a new one, and I'm seeing an old experience um, and everything that came with that, but I'm starting to also see the beauty in both. You know, you, you start to realize, um, you know, the way, <clears throat> the way you can look at it is, you know, Once we're fully fifth dimensional, you know, fourth density, fifth dimensional, you know, fully um, in that state, you know, what are we going to look at at this experience and say, wow, I really love that. Wow, that was really unique for me. You know, that's something that, you know, and, and, and it, right now is the most important point. You know, I always, you guys are always. And so, like, when I was in that present, you know, what was that unique experience that was really, you know, uh, genuine to me. And for me, like, I've always loved, you know, one thing is sports. I've always been into athletics my entire life. And I found, you know, my father and I were discussing this last night, you know, such an incredible beauty in finding uh, camaraderie uh, in team sports and seeing how, you know, you can't go play baseball by yourself, you know. But it was this, you know, it was a mechanism that was really unique to Earth to where we, you know, and, you know, ETs look at the fact that we throw these balls around and a lot of things, and it's, it's kind of funny, and they have their slight variations. But for us, you know, I look at some of these things that bring together the entire world, like um, culinary uh, food brings together the entire world, you know, sports bring together the entire world, music brings together the entire world, um, interesting quantum physics and mathematics bring together the, the entire world. And those are the kind of things that I see are bringing to, together to, to the entire world because it's a shared consciousness. It's, it's no matter what, you know, a, an individual in China um, can love an American dish and a person in America can love a Taiwanese or Mexican dish, you know, no matter what, it's just good, you know, it's just good food, you know, it's, 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 it's just like it's saying, it's a win-win, you know, why not enjoy something good, you know, it, it's good music, it's good music, you enjoy it, it's, it's, it's fun to dance, it's good, it's, it's fun to play sports with your friends, it's good, it's, it's fun to draw and make art, it's, and, you know, these are things that, um, when you cut through all the fog, all the distortions of the other stuff happening on the earthly experience, you know, that's the things we, we, we have as our memories, those are the things we, we, you know, as we're excarnating and leaving this body in this energetic vehicle, we're going to say, you know, those are the memories. You know, it's not how much did I accumulate in matter and those things, and it's all, you know, fluid individuals learn, you know. At the end of the day, it's what you really, you know, reminisce upon and love and its experiences, the relationships you had, the friends you made family along the way, the beautiful, uh, funny, hilarious, embarrassing moments that you had as a human where you're like, oh, my God, like, why did I feel so bad about it? Like, that was so unique to have such an incredible, embarrassing moment, but that was something that is going and already has rippled throughout your entire oversoul. You've given such a richness because of just that experience from just having that such a limited perspective, perspective to be able to have that experience. You know, we couldn't have a lot of these experiences with the full knowingness, you know, because that's the whole point of this. We incarnate it on, on purpose with, you know, the, the rule set in, hey, you're getting a veil put on you because it allows for extreme amounts of spiritual growth, uh, bodily growth, and mental growth. And, you know, it's going to be you know, tough as hell sometimes, but it's also going to be rewarding and incredible at times. You know, it's 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 high risk, high reward kind of thing. But we're masters of ascension, masters of limitations. So we're like, yeah, let's do it. Why not? You know, like at the end of the day, you know, from that perspective, it, it's you're connected with one. It's all good. You know, it's going to be experience. You know, and for me, that's you know what we look at on people say on their dying deathbeds. What do you remember? I think that's also truly what we look at from our unique human experience. It's it's really us connecting with our soul. Then at that point, saying. Hey, you know, we have these people say your life flashes before your eyes. I think that you getting a a connection from a higher sense of, hey, here's your life. What did you love and enjoy about this experience? You know, because you can have a choice then to have it again. You know, and and a lot of people do because they then realize with that awareness of, wow, man, those experiences they have, the intangibles, those things that weren't dealing with the bullshit of money and all the other dramas and anxieties of the world. You know, those experiences that were the rich ones um, that really hit me home. You know, that I knew in that life, even if you were very you know, asleep, so to speak, you still, it resonates deeply in some way, you, you, you look into your first child being born in a human experience, you know, I haven't had that yet, but, you know, that's, you know, something that in, in itself is so profound, you're looking at these experiences that are the human experience um, from this limited awareness and perspective, which we're shifting because we've had enough lessons and we've had enough of these beautiful experiences, but we're going to take that with us and it's going to be augmented into our next experiences, and it's... It's that's I mean to me that's those are the truly the beauty you know those those intangibles that 
truly can only be had through human experience that um, are having such a profound effect, you know, on the such a large scale. The simplicities of life. Yeah, you know. That was beautiful, Gordon. Yeah. Thank you, man. That's interesting, too, even as a parent, that I didn't even really look at having a child and carrying a child and being, you know, I'd never really looked at that as anything special, well, not special, but you know what I mean, like like you just said, you know, I, I didn't even choose that as one, of my highest, you know, as one of my highest things about being a human, but you're absolutely right, to, to create life is, there's nothing more than that feeling, you know? Yeah. We're co-creators, you know? We're here to be co-creators on this beautiful planet. That's that's our highest excitement, you know, and whatever's your creation is there's nothing better than that, you know, creating something. It's just it's what everyone yearns for truly, you know. And sharing that is is nature is nature nature is collaborative. It's not competitive. We've, we've, a lot of people bought into that illusion, and Darwin didn't even say that. He was just marketed the wrong way. He said the word love 94 times, and they marketed him as saying, oh, well, he's a competitive this once, so where he's at. But nature is collaborative. You know, we're supposed to follow nature. It's always our greatest model, you know. Nature is so harmonious, and an earth can be that way. Human beings can be harmonious. It's just, um, you know, it's common. It's, you know, awareness, you know, will lead to change. I always feel that a movement, you know, you can never even... Use all the violence you want, but people like Gandhi and Dr. King and others, you know, it, it was, you can't put down a thought, you know, once you create an idea and a consciousness, no matter how much you torture and suppress and imprison, you can't put down a consciousness and a thought, you know, it's going to, it's going to spread, you know, if people resonate and match that frequency. Yep. Caitlin. Oh, well, um, <clears throat> well, Gordon kind of took my answer with the holy emotion thing. <laughs> I've been thinking about that for like 10 minutes now. You took it. Oh, um, you can express it in a different way. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess yeah. so. Um, oh, yeah, humans do range from uh, um, like a large portion of emotion, and I feel like that does make us different because a lot of different species... Um, study us because of that and also they because they're confused as to why we feel those emotions or what brings that and they don't feel that that's the thing some of them just they don't understand and they, they want to understand um, coming from me as well like in my past lives like I never um, had much emotion I barely had or felt anything um, so when I would encounter a person, I'd just be kind of confused, or I would be that's I would just have really weird emotions. And so coming here, it's like it's so different. And at the same time, it can be hell, but it can be good as well because I'm getting experience from that. And I can bring that up there when I leave. Um, also, we just experience many different things. We have so many opportunities. Um, compared to other races as well, because some people just do the same thing in their race. They they know what to do when they come here. Um, and just discovering who we are, um, remembering who we are, um, that's something that's really important as well, and uh, which what makes us unique as well, because, yeah, sure, we are ourselves when we're here, but we're discovering different talents we have and um, learning from lessons, and we tell ourselves we are wrong or we're doing the wrong thing, but in actual reality, we're not. We're just learning something new, and we're, we decide whether we want to get past that or if we want to stay, stay in the same spot. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely what I feel makes us different. And I, what I love about humans uh, and being human is we have so much history in our veins. Uh, our ancestry is... It can be endless, um, and we haven't even found out much of it yet. So, I mean, when I say we're mutts, it's not a bad thing. Uh, we just have so many gifts from being uh, a mutt. <laughs> not, well, it sounds a little weird saying that. But we have a lot of different traits in DNA because of what happened in the past. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, I, I definitely love the fact we're also multicultural as well. So many different um, races of people, so much history, and so much to discover now because in the future, you know, there's going to be a lot of um, release of uh, history, more history that hasn't been told yet. Um, so that's what I love about he being human and also, you know, having my cat there. <laughs> love, definitely love animals. Yeah, don't leave the cat out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, also animals, like, uh, animals help us so much. Uh, so, I mean, I definitely, I can't let that go, that the fact we have animals and we also have so many different entities here that uh, help us with things. Whenever we need help, you know, we still get signs and, you know, we're never alone. Um, so that's what's good about being human. We also, we just have so many guides, so many um, entities that are willing to help us and teach us things. And that's what's really beautiful about um, going through this process of living. Um, so yeah, that's what I feel, <laughs> definitely. See, nice. Very nice. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, girl. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, Guru Dan? Is he there? Yeah, I'm here hiding in the corner munching on some peanuts. Hello. Muted. Yeah, hello, hello, hello. So, the question was, what do you think makes us unique, different, and what do you enjoy about being human? Uh, everything everybody said. <laughs> pizza. Yeah, it's more than that. Yeah, I'm um, I'm really appreciative of the spiritual challenge, the planet Earth game, the design of creation as a whole. It's it's epic, brilliant. I like you know, the, the part of the Planet Earth game where, you know, we're, we're these giant pieces of consciousness and we can send little focuses, little pieces of consciousness, you know, and spread them out everywhere. And the challenge to that, that incarnation is to, you know, incarnate in amnesia and awaken through all the contrast that's that's offered and then once you awaken through there bring as much spiritual information through as you can it's a really great challenge because you know as an eternal being you just don't float around in space and talk about how great you are I mean after I mean really a year of that you're bored right so as as eternal beings we need a challenge <laughs> oh, <laughs> why not let's go be a human let's go be a platypus let's go be a, a an armadillo, it's going to be an emu or something. Yeah, also, go. like Gordon said earlier, there's no change in outside of the time stream. So you can't change unless you're in a time stream and you have amnesia to an extent. Yeah, well, because if you don't get the amnesia, then you, you may try to limit yourself to beginning where you left off. Where if you have total amnesia, you get the joy of doing it all over again, you know. So salt and pepper is always good, right? Because even though it never changes, it, at least you know it's fresh again, and that's how they make things fresh again. You know, say so, well if you forget that you don't like it, then you'll like it for a while before you, don't, you know. So it, it gives you that freedom to resonate in any direction you you care to. It's brilliant, right? Whoever whoever designed that portion of creation, like was really, really bright, <laughs> you know, it's like, and you can manifest whatever you want, so, you know, you, it, it's just neat, the whole system is just neat, it's like uh, when Max asked this question the other day, I told, he asked me if I would do it again, he said, would you reincarnate, I said, oh yeah, hell yeah, in a second, no problem, he said, well, you know, what about your trials and tribulations, all that stuff, so, yeah, yeah, what about it, you know, it's just part of the game. Part of the game, you know, did I contract for some of that stuff? Yeah, I suppose I did, and I'm glad I did because had I not, 
I wouldn't have awakened. I wouldn't have had the opportunity to awaken in this incarnation. You know, I would have had a different incarnation where I stayed asleep. You know, I, and there are inc incarnations that I'm aware of where I stay asleep the whole time. And I wanted to start waking up, and I wanted to start being aware of things, and I wanted to have that stronger connection with my non-physical self. And so, you know, this, this whole spiritual awakening thing, for the last 10 years, you know, I've really enjoyed the study of the non-physical. Because inside the study of that, all this cool stuff is. Everything resides there. You know, this, this alien stuff, a galactic language, all these other things, you know, that I'm finding out here in the group. You know, all this stuff is available. You know, you just don't, you just don't plug into YouTube and find this stuff. You, you I had have a, to, a question of your guru, Dan. Yeah. When, you, when you study... When you've studied all this other stuff about extraterrestrials and stuff, do you feel that you're connected more with yourself now than you've ever been? You're connected more to creation. You, you, you realize that you're, you're a part of the whole, if not the whole, and they're a part of you. Either way you look at it, because it's... The slinky philosophy, right? So, uh, depending on if you're you know, one side of the slinky perspective or the or the other side of the slinky perspective, because it, it, it's Schrodinger's cat, right? Both perspectives are in the same slinky. So, it, you know, whatever your topic is, you 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 are it, and it is you, right? If it wasn't you, you couldn't perceive it, according to Bashar. And, and I'm finding that to be true. If you can't perceive it, it's not it's not real to you anywhere. Does that mean it's not real to somebody else? No, it could very much be real to somebody else, but that's their slinky. Do you that's do you feel thing. yes, do you feel like you knowing what you know now than say you did twenty years ago, do you feel that you're more grounded, more connected with who yes. you are? Yes. From, you know what I mean? And then than you have been. And it's an unlimited thing because I'm I'm still finding out and connected to things that I hadn't thought I was I had no inkling of before. So there's your your unaware self and then your aware self, you know. So your self before your awakening, you know, doesn't even ponder this stuff. Doesn't here's even ponder. Thing, here's the thing also. Do you feel at times that in a way you're separate from other people also? You feel a little bit that you're you don't have the same type of people around you like you used to. Oh yeah, well that's true because your tribe, your tribe doesn't come. That was one of the hard lessons. The tribe, the tribe doesn't come with you. Right. And nor are they required to. It would be nice to awaken with company, yes. but it's very rarely so. Um, uh, something I wrote uh, some time ago. I forget what I called it. Let me let me just find it real quick. As soon as I get going here. Mm, T. T. Yeah, the reason why I bring that up is um, you know, many, for many, even for many of us, we learn so much and we remember so much, but yet a part of us feels like we're alone we're isolated at times. As the observer, sometimes you're observing. Yeah. yeah. Here's here's the thing. Here's the thing that uh, when, when did I write this thing? Let me find let me make my properties real quick. October fifth, twenty thirteen. And oh, why did I click that one? In life, the steps that mean the most are the ones you take by yourself. Okay? In life, the steps that mean the most are the ones you take by yourself. And then, this is a clue to what's really going on. It's truth. And what is the truth? So you're living the truth that's yours. Well, are you living the truth that's yours for what someone else has told you? Are you still looking for the truth? Are you unsure where the truth is? So the truth is within. You don't have to go looking for it. It's within you all this time. Did you really think that God would make it hard to find him or her in the truth? If you will push aside the truths that you have been told and go within to find your own truth, I will guarantee that if you take action on that, you will never walk on unfamiliar ground ever again. 
You will never doubt the truth ever again because it will be your own truth. You will never doubt ever again. You will know the truth is pure because you have found it yourself and not by any middleman. Do you want peace while well, being in oneness? Then this is how it's done. All you need to do is ask yourself now is what's it worth to you? Are you willing to do what are you willing to do to get to your truth? And yes, it's got to be your truth because no one else's truth will do. Are you willing to get serious about your spiritual practice? Are you willing to meditate into your own silence and find the perfect consciousness that resides there? Are you willing to set aside distractions that have been keeping you away from your own inner self? Oh, sure, everyone learns all they can about the physical world, and some egos are so large they can't be told anything at all. Then will you seek your spiritual side? <clears throat> when you're older, perhaps, or when you're so sick you can't do anything else but that, must you really be driven into sickness and disease before you get rid of the distractions that have been holding you back all this time? Pain isn't a punishment and never has been. Instead, pain is a wake-up call to get a wake-up call to get your attention on the more important things of your spirit. How long do you think you can go on frustrating your own soul and ignoring it before it strikes out to get your undivided attention? Because that's what it does. When 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 your soul gets frustrated, it'll give you a disease and <laughs> make you go inward and look at it. So, yes, pain is a very useful tool and it's a very, very effective at getting everyone's attention no matter who their egos tell them there are. Pain is much stronger than any ego. Pain can bring the strongest man down to his knees. If you are experiencing pain, then you better start paying attention to what it wants. Pain is telling you that something is wrong and you better start working on your inner self and not the outer self because most people think you know, even disease is outside of them. So that, that was just a little something I wrote. A little years, something. Uh, it sounds like a beautiful book in the making. So, in life, the steps that mean the most are the ones you take by yourself. You know, even you know, in adolescence, you know, oh, you're mad at your best friends, and you go for a walk, and you're cussing them, and oh, so and so did this, and Jimmy did that, and Billy did this, and Fred did that, and the dog bit me, and my airplane died, and all this stuff, and you know, and and you, and then you're out by yourself. And you're taking those steps and learn. oh, well, maybe I, I don't really hate my friends. Maybe I'm just mad at me because I thought I was cooler than that. And I thought my friends shouldn't do that to me. Or I thought I would feel mistreated. But who's telling me to feel that way? You know, all the steps in life to me and the most are the ones you take by yourself. Those are the ones. The, the ones that are free of pollution. It's just cool being able to get to that. Just getting to that aspect of life is really pretty cool. Yeah, I wrote that in 2013. It's easier as sure. kids to let me. Oh, hey, let me ask it's you easier something. Than, oh, go ahead, Sabrina. Sorry. No, I just want to ask him. Now that you wrote this in 2013, when um, now that you have a wider perspective, would you still say that you were walking along? Oh no, no. No, it's that you're usually alone, free from distraction when you come to your realizations. Right? Okay. That doesn't mean that you're necessarily uh, spiritually alone, but you're probably usually physically alone. When you make these milestone, you know, leaps of growth, Okay. you're usually by yourself. You know, after you get thrown out of your parents' house the first couple of times, if you're allowed to, even after the first couple. You know, when when you you learn these life lessons, you're usually alone, physically. So it's. Uh, I agree it's with you cool. on that definitely. You know, and yeah. So after a while, and and these wisdoms begin to stack up on you, and when you begin to look your inner teacher, this this inner being that that is really you know where your wisdom is. When you start finding that wise portion of you and tuning it all. All the steps I took, uh, you know, most of the steps that I took while I was alone were the most important ones. So that's the, the wisdom is. Yeah, that's when the realizations come. That's when the epiphanies come. That's when you're off. Yeah, alone, all one. Yeah, that's right, in fact. Yeah, so it, it's neat, you know, these um, interesting things that we have to learn. So when, when you ask, you know, what's great about 
you know, that's just an aspect of one of the things that great to learn as a human that, oh, look at all this cool wisdom that's here. Look at this neat stuff. Look at all this. Would you do it again? Yeah. Yeah. Without doubt, in a nanosecond. Oh, hey, you're dead. You want to reincarnate? Yeah. What's taking so long? Zap me back already, you know? What's, what's and that's why cry. That's what Cryon said is we uh, we always come back because we love it. This well, yeah, is what well, we do. Said, we only manifest into the dimensions that we enjoy. So if it wasn't cool here, we wouldn't be here. Yeah, at some we'd point be before we came, this sounded like the most we'd exciting be a rock or something. We'd be in an asteroid floating around, bumping into other rocks because we're bored. You know, it's, we'd be doing something else if we didn't like it here. So when you can find a zest of your life in that, when life is exciting again, when you have that kind of knowledge, you go, oh, oh, same shit, different day. Get up, go to work. Yeah, but what if you get up and go to work and it's exciting? Wow, you know, what if you can look at life new again? You know, a lot of people don't even realize they have that chance. It's crazy, crazy, crazy cool fun, though. It's brilliant. The planet Earth game, the best thing going in the universe. That's why we're all here. You know, there's neat side of Justin's going, yeah, man. <laughs> But yeah, it's yeah. Would I do it again? Yeah. Would I drag you guys with me? Sure. Want to come? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be the first one down. I'm gonna be the first one. Down. I'm gonna be the first in line. Without without any doubts. Um, Dan, are you interested in answering the question? Which part okay. of it? <laughs> Which one? Uh, why do I like it here? Why, um, why, what's great about being here? Oh, no, no. I was talking to the other Dan. I thought you were done. Oh, so. oh and Paco Dan. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I'll, I'll <laughs> shut up. And pick the Dan, any Dan. Pick the Dan. Pick the, pick the, that was beautiful, Guru Dan. Ninja Dan. Sorry. Ninja Dan. Yeah, Ninja Dan and Guru Dan. I, I should call him in Paco. Hey, call me whatever you want. I'm not fussed, it's just a label at the end of the day. <clears throat> okay, yeah. so the question, uh, since you have actually experienced other ETs more closely, so um, I'm going to ask you this one for this from this angle. What do you think makes humanity different? Different than what? Than other different ETs. Than the ETs, yeah. For one, we live on Earth. That's pretty different to other planets. Yeah. Um, sex, most definitely. It's got to be. For one, we're the only animal on this planet that actually asks permission before we do. But like, that is that's amazing. The fact that we've come to a stage in consciousness where we ask permission. Wait, Dan. How do you know? How do you know that, though? It definitely doesn't look like they ask permission. They don't ask. For, how do you know they don't ask permission in the wild? Yeah, technically, they do. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I suppose. Thank you, Caitlin. We both. Well, no problem. We don't. It's consciously rape. So I mean, like, I mean. Let him on. finish. He had something beautiful. Let him. But it's okay. yeah, like we've we've kind of. We're the animal with words. You know, every animal has their own specific language, and we've been given the voice box. But we've also got the body language that we've developed over time from evolution or whatever, you know. However we got here, we ended up with traits that are a little bit more raw and ones that are a little bit more diplomatic. And I kind of like that about the humans. It makes us different from terrestrial animals and it also it kind of from my my experiences each of these different races kind of had to go through a similar sort of thing not necessarily exactly the same you know they some could have you know just sprung to a state of consciousness where they go yep yeah, cool we know exactly how we're going to do it you know other people have had you know, all of this nonsense that's going on at the minute that we've got. And we're now getting to a stage where we're 
we're choosing different ways. And I kind of like the way that humans are, they're making decisions for themselves now, rather than seeking to gods or seeking to, you know, whatever else is there. They're starting to even look inside themselves and go, I like this and I don't like this. And they're also kind of questioning governments, they're questioning the powers that have been there for, you know, many centuries, many generations. And they're starting to be a bit more strong in conviction, a bit more heart behind it, rather than just sort of being slapped about by their slave master. And if we are a, a race that was designed to, uh, to mine and to, you know, follow orders, that's a pretty big accomplishment as well. You know, we've we've outgrown that sort of programming. And from your experience, you know, of other ETs, do they ask each other permission? Some don't. Some just, you know, go ahead and do it. There are that some that do. There are there are quite a few. Um, it's basically like an unwritten consent that you give. You don't necessarily say yes, you don't necessarily say no, but somewhere in your subconscious there's like a little check or a cross in a box. And we, we don't we don't really realise that we're doing it until we catch on that we're we're saying yes or saying no. And it's uh, I guess they can pick up on it before we've even realized it. <laughs> but, you know, it's one of those things that we're, we're relearning how to work ourselves. And, you know, it's exactly like what's said about the amnesia. The human amnesia is a, uh, it's a really powerful tool because to forget and then to remember, you appreciate the entire thing, the entire journey you've been on, you know, you even get a glimpse of things that you have done. And I, I think that's pretty cool, to be able to transcend that time-space kind of existence just by closing your eyes and remembering it. Uh, I think that's a, an awesome creation. Uh, being a Humi is amazing. Okay, so is, is, that, what you, opinion, is that what you yeah. love about it? What, being a... Uh, a human. I'm not really sure. I, I've, I just kind of enjoy being a human. Like we're we're like we're really convenient. Uh, I'm, I can't really explain it with words. The um the feeling I get. I feel I feel what you mean too, and I feel like maybe that's a relatively new thing that we can finally be appreciative of ourselves and finally see the beauty of it all before it was just another perspective. That's it, yeah. Kind of... Humans are extremely well designed. And we have an extreme, like, if you look at every type of physical and anatomical makeup throughout this universe, which, you know, there's incredible amounts, but, you know, from my experience and from my intuition, you, I really feel the human being... Um, there's a lot of um, efficiency to us. There's a lot of um, we haven't tapped into nearly, you know, we're 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 at the very like we we tapped into such, to such a minimal degree of our capabilities, you know. So I know we have such an incredible, you know, uh, potential, you know, and and I think we get glimpses of it, and we're starting to realize we're getting glimpses more and more. But as you guys are realizing and picking up on, is I I think humans. Um, you know, we're all equal, but as far as when you experience it, you know, compared to like, you know, it just, it's just very, um, you can look at it in very practical terms, you know, you know, human having a tail and not a tail, human having five fingers versus four, you know, all these various different things that we just kind of take for granted as, oh, I'm just human, these are my, you know, this is how I work and this is this, you know, it's different for different unique entities having their experiences, and when you're in this experience, it's, it's really rewarding when you learn to really, you know, master this mechanism and, and really learn to embrace all these capabilities we have. And you know, you're, we're starting to see it more and more, especially with you know the young, young young generation incarnating now. And we just have this already natural, very just you know, 
abilities within the human body that we all can have. It's just a matter of tapping into it. And I think we have an incredible design, you know, um, that has so much potential. Can I share something real quick? Really fast, just uh, a thing I love about humanity is the generation before us and how much strength they've shown to get us to this point and the generations before us, which we've participated in, but I mean mostly the generation before. Like, I'm 25, so I mean, like, that generation. You guys know what I mean, but the one that preceded us, just how much work has been put in and dedication and being in this low vibration and staying to the end to watch the fruits come, the fruition of everything. Just much, much appreciation. Yeah. I 100% I agree. You know, I feel like that's something that we don't embrace, you know, Gordon. Yeah. Like our, we don't re, we don't realize how grateful, or we should be to our previous generation. Yeah, they dealt with a lot of very dense energy, you know, to, to put it plainly. But it, it's hard, you know. And I speak with my father and, and people from, you know, in the 60s and around that generation, and, and these, you know, just. It, it, I, I see, you know, just look at some of the footage of, you know, some of these, you know, movements in the streets and just people coming out, you know, whatever, you know, movement, but like, you know, the anti-war ones being in particular, and it's just like people coming out and just only saying, listen, please just don't go to war, you know, we're only about love, and it's just only purely good intent, but then going against the powers that be and just, and then having to just stay resilient in the fact that, you know, like I was saying before, you can do whatever means to try to suppress and suppress, but the fact is they won because we are a living example because of our consciousness, you know, and, and, and the people who resonate with what they did and the more and more people who are awakening from our generation, um, we wouldn't be where we are without them. You know, we wouldn't be where we are without those, those figures to really change consciousness, to say, no, enough's enough. We don't need to, to, to experience this. We don't need this, need to this way. We don't need to look at it as one person as any less than another person. We don't need to look at one sex as any less than another sex. We don't need to look at one spirituality as any better than another. Any, you know, these, it's all these basically trying to give complete freedom to the human being, you know, trying to give complete pursuit of happiness, as Patrick Henry said, to the human being, you know. Looking at our founding fathers truly, you know, in America and what they really resonated with was, you know, letting a free country completely express itself with all the inhabitants, you know, not letting, you know, the privatized things and the banking get too dictated, not giving too much away to, you know, because it was just, they understood that you have to trust in, in the human being, you know, you have to trust in the ability of the human being, you know, they came to the America, or, you know, this, I'm just using this example, and you can use this for any, you know, culture, I'm not saying this with any bias, it's just an example, but, you know, they came to a place and they said, you know, we are creating something fresh, you know, we are, the living example. We are the first here, um, and you know, it wasn't. Uh, no, sorry, no, no. I don't say the first here because obviously Native American, but we we had to. We had a choice then, which obviously we didn't make all the greatest choices with how we could live in harmony with the natives. But the point is, we're here and we're dealing with it now. And yes, it is so vital, you know, for us to remember history because history isn't time is is illusion. Those were just experiences we had in those now moments with choices we had, and certain choices were made and certain choices weren't made. But the, but the matter of the fact is we're living in this now, and there's still certain lessons that we still haven't fully uh, taken in on, on the individual level and the collective level. Um, but there are incredibly great lessons that we did take in in the past because of those individuals in consciousness to bring that awareness and say, we can change our reality. You know, we, we, we can be a proof of something better, and you look at the examples now in certain contexts, like, you know, look at, you know, there's much better equality in a lot of ways, it's not perfect, but, um, yeah, that, that is not history to me, that's still very alive, and something that we um, have always, always need to keep in tune in our frequency, you know, keeping that in mind, you know, um, learn, you know, and always be appreciative and, and always being a teacher and a student, you know, uh, never being fixed and never saying, you know, this is, this is, this is it, this is the best system, this is the best way of doing things, you know, it's always um, allowing, you know, positive change, you know, um, because somebody can have a bright, new, great idea no matter what age they are, and that's something that I really resonate and, and find a lot of beauty in when seeing 
um, interactions with hybrid children or ETs is, you know, there's such a deep appreciation of every living entity, uh, no matter age or degree of expertise or anything. You know, a valid truth is a valid truth. You know, something that resonates as holistic thinking and, and, and synergistic and symbiotic, you know, you, you look at the beauty of the flaw for itself, you know, um, and I think that's where we're moving now, where we, 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 we were, we're done with the label games, we're done with the ego games, we're done with the matter-based game, and we're just looking at the beauty of things for themselves, you know. Um, Can I add one more thing before Justin? I like how we can affect others without even having to speak as a human. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I just love seeing your guys' faces. Energy. Energy, yeah. We oh. love you too, Bri. Are you going to go, Justin? Share your experience? Go ahead, Justin. Um, um, hello. What experience hello, am I... Hello, Justin. Hello. So, so the question is... Mm -hmm. uh, what makes humanity different or... What makes you different? Um, and what do you enjoy about being human? I was actually, honestly, when, when I heard the question earlier, what came to me was instead of focusing on what's different necessarily, what's something that's, you know, more similar? Because, you know, we're told that we are living in, you know, separation. We're living in an idea of separation. I'm really wanting to move out of the idea of separation. So well, it's not about separation. It's about highlighting what's what's good about us. And we're uniques within the collective. So we are still individuals yeah. within a collective. So, so it's reckon is it's just what do, what do I recognize as you know some of the beautiful, amazing things that come with you know making the choice to be human. Yeah. Oh man, everything. I mean, the fact that like we are able, I mean, the 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 fact that we're able to make a choice, and and then that choice, we have an idea that it's possibly going to go a certain way. However, with other people and their free will and their ideas and their unique stuff, it really changes the experience that we set up for ourselves. Um, and it and it's really neat because that also like that's our free will. But then it's also neat because to me like we are all connected as a collective, and we are you know just building these experiences to just be able to grow in and out of separation and into the truth of of our beingness of our own unique and individual natures. Um, I, I'm feeling more right now. Um, like I feel almost like like a like a kid, like a like a baby again, like learning. Um, yeah, that's how I feel. That that's what we were discussing earlier before you came in, Justin. How timeless it was when we were playing as kids. Mm -hmm. Now that's returning. Yeah, I just I feel like I'm a kid. Yeah, I just feel like a kid, like like I'm like and I have this um like thirst, if you will, for 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 learning again and, and for experiencing um and and understanding that and this now I have the understanding awareness that it's me that that controls the flow of my experiences in my in my now moments and it's really exciting especially now um, to have the awareness and understanding that I am really doing it on a conscious level now that I'm learning you know without having to question without having to necessarily like like I have awareness and I have understanding and when I do get some awareness and I get some understanding, I don't feel like I have to like get a complete understanding and complete awareness, like just enough so that it just makes stuff happen just effortlessly. 
and really learning to trust in like you know my ideas that I'm allowing myself to um, experience you know like being timeless allowing myself to really be in alignment with the idea that I've completely healed my heart my mind my body my spirit my soul um, it's It's a, it is definitely an honor and a privilege to be able to, you know, have the opportunity to, to come to this reality. Um, also because we, I really feel that we, we are able to enjoy this one and then when we truly allow ourselves to awaken to, you know, the nature of, you know, our beingness and the nature of, you know, existence, that not only do we exist here but we exist on so many levels and so many different forms that if we just allow ourselves to imagine this that we truly can experience it in a manner that we experience things here and now through our vessels be able to experience you know here and nows in our other vessels you know and, and other timelines and other planets that all those different infinite, you know, all those infinite vessels and aspects of personality and whatnot, it's as if I see them as just different stars and all these stars are shining their light down to earth and this light creates the earth and then from that I'm created. And that's how I see myself as being able to connect with any human being I meet as well as any ideas of any other beings and or energies out there for me to experience and I really enjoy and really enjoy that fact that you know humans really really are super interesting and have just an infinite amount an infinite amount of experiences experiences for us to experience if we just align ourselves with that choice you guys Sabrina left oh should we should uh, wasn't she the one who was going to end the live I think so yes yeah, she, she was on its own after a little bit mm. uh, oh after she leaves it will go off on its own is that what you're saying <laughs> Um, well, she not logged off now, is it? No, it's not still live. She might have just lost internet connection. Well, she I've got to go pick up somebody, so I will see you she all. Also, she while. actually had, <clears throat> she had an appointment. Excuse me. Oh, okay. So I, um, but I thought she was going to turn off the live, but I think she just didn't want to interrupt the end of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for sharing, guys. I, I loved all that. Yeah, that was yeah, really too. Great. And, you know, the thing about the emotions, too, though, something that struck me about talking about the inner child, you know, where those aren't you guys feeling more emotions now than you did before? Definitely. But so, uh, if we're feeling, yeah. and I would agree that a lot of that is hereditary, well, environment and hereditary, that some of us are predestined to be more emotional than others. I, I'm not disagreeing with that. Um, but I'm finding that since my aware, since my awakening, if you will, my awareness, that I'm I'm far more emotional than I was in my entire life. And so, are we? As Sabrina said, are we are we more aware of that? But yet, I it's happening more. It's not even just that I'm becoming more aware of it. It's that it's just happening more. And so, is part of it tied to going back to being more childlike, where you remember as a child if. You know, we cried about things if we didn't get our way. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I find that, um, you know, I, I've been empathic my whole life, but um, and as more of, like, discovering that, that what it was, because I never knew. Yeah, I never knew what it was 
feeling all these emotions so no, um, me either. much. And then when I came into this whole spirituality thing, it was I found out it was being empathic. So I was like, oh, okay. So that's why when I pass somebody, I'll feel what they're feeling. Or if somebody st stares at me, I'll know what they're feeling. It's weird. Exactly. It's, it's creepy too, because you know it I've is. My whole I mean, life, but it's now more more vibrant than ever. You know. So yeah. Precisely. So I'm just wondering. I mean, are we? Is it both? You know, are we becoming not only more aware of it, but are we experiencing more of it because we're becoming more aware of our surroundings and our environment and, and the fact that we're creating our own time and our own universe and you know is the emotion behind I find that when I when I hear a channeling and I connect to whatever energy is behind that channeling or the message within the channeling sometimes it's just so powerfully emotional that connection that I've never experienced that before like ever in my life and it's like, okay, well, what is that? And when talk about having a realization, you know, or one of those aha moments, you know, sometimes I have found myself having them in front of other people, and it brings me to tears. And then everybody's like, oh, my God, what's going what's wrong on? With her? Oh, my God. <laughs> well, for one, I don't think it's a, a this or that. Uh, I think it's the awareness being formed. Because as a child, you know, you have all of these different emotions that we've been given, so you're going to test them out. And then you get to an adult, and then you kind of know what emotion is what. You have like a label for it, pretty much. So then you can go, okay, this is me feeling this, this is me feeling that. And then we can develop our awareness for our emotions, for our mental state, and all of this stuff just by experiencing it previously. So as we get to a, a state of awareness, generally on the verge of becoming an adult, sort of, it, it tends to happen. And then you kind of, you learn what you like, what you don't like, what you prefer, you know, all of these different, I guess, ideas that either make you happy or make you sad or make you, you know, all of these and more. And then we kind of learn to learn to play more with them. You know, there's even emotions that we didn't know we had. So we're we're now getting to a point where we've we've kind of left a few of the ones that we don't enjoy behind. And now we're learning to enjoy other ones. Learning to test out, you know, these new ones that we do prefer, which ones we don't prefer. So we're kind of it's on a constant, constant cycle of learn it, drop it, learn more, drop it, learn more, drop it, and just keep repeating that pretty much. Because we just <laughs> we pick it up, we release it. It's like a game of like you know basketball or whatever sport you want really. You get your little moment, then you pass it on, then you get another little moment, then you pass it on. You know, and then eventually you score a goal, and then you go yes realization way and then you let it go again onto the next one you know and then you don't you don't really pick it on you like during the game you don't go oh, I've scored like three goals and you know this you go right let's score another one you're not worried about the ones you have scored and we just keep moving we keep learning keep progressing and I think we're we're pretty good at that as as a species as well just sort of Taking a punch, moving on. You know, we build something, then we go. Ah, we can make this better. Let's do it. You know. <laughs> Brother and Paku, and for the rest of the oh. group, I have a uh, question. This, uh, I was, I was on a walk. Um, Justin, can you wait a second? I wanna, I wanna close to stop the broadcast. Oh, okay, okay. All right, because I'm gonna have to leave soon. Okay. So. I just want to thank everybody for coming, for participating, for being honest, for answering the questions from the heart, and for being yourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Sabrina, and, and, and the same to you. Namaste. Namaste.